I think at the heart of this collection is very much a creative struggle between the very analytical business mind of Pierre Schlumberger with his very flamboyant wife. You see two wonderful parallel tastes coming together to form really explosive results. Pierre Schlumberger took over the running of the family oil company. He was influenced very much from his uncle Maurice, who suggested that he commit to buying art. And he amassed a really wonderful and very sophisticated collection by the kind of the early 20th century master painters such as Picasso, Mondrian, Braque. What's really interesting about the Schlumberger family is that the family tree really reads like a who's who of the art world and wonderful benefactors and patrons of the art. You have the Boissonnard family in France and first cousins of Pierre Schlumberger, Dominique de Menil, who was largely responsible for putting together one of the most far-sighted collections in all of American post-war collecting history. And in fact, even as recently as 2000, the Rothko Chapel of the de Menil Foundation became a national official treasure in America. In 1961, Pierre Schlumberger met and married his second wife, Sal, and she brought a great effervescence to his life. It was her influence, if you like, that very much made the couple compulsive collectors of young contemporary art. And they started to buy Ad Reinhardt, Morris Lewis, John Chamberlain, and the crowning addition to their collection, of course, was the Mark Rothko painting, all of which were bought via Marlborough Gallery, which was very much, you know, the happening young gallery at the time. Sal's involvement with the art went far further than most collectors. I think it's no misunderstanding that the relationships with artists like Salvador Dali, for example, but also Andy Warhol, were ones that she held to a great high level of, of esteem and importance to her. If you look at Dali, for example, Sal not only had her portrait painted by Dali, uh, but also had a wonderful coral pearl inlaid necklace that Dali had gifted to her as well, which will be selling, in fact. Being in the fortunate position that they were in high society, both in America and in France, enabled them to really capitalize, if you like, on the fundamental creativity that was happening on both sides of the Atlantic post-war. So, you know, Andy Warhol rubbed shoulders with Picasso, rubbed shoulders with Ad Reinhardt, rubbed shoulders with Miro or Max Ernst, for example. So it's an incredibly eclectic taste, but very impactful, very daring in the different sort of pursuits that they were following. The great opportunity in bringing a collection like this to market is that simply nobody knew the extensive nature of the collection, what was really there when these works were first put together, how historical they really are. The Rothko specifically has only ever belonged to the Schlumberger family, that's it. So this really does feel like a new journey for this collection, disseminating it out into the world.